Okay, it's part two, or it's the new week, hello. <laughs> I decided to do something different because of how big my hole is this week. As in, it's a, it's a Friday, and I had a lot of stuff come in. So, this was split into uh, two parts. Part one was last week. That was uh, my JB haul. Uh, I'd say it's... I'd say it's more films. But, but it isn't. <laughs> Let's look at the Amazon haul. All right, so first up, we had a lot of Scream Factory releases. There's a Scream Factory releases, a big French box set, and a big CD box set, which is probably all on the thumbnail. <laughs> so first off, with a sleeve. Wow. House of Wax, the uh, one with Paris Hilton in it. Yeah. Um, I actually reversed the inside artwork because I do really like this artwork. Obviously, the alternate is on the sleeve, which is... I mean, it's fine. I'm not huge on it, but it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so this was... This got, what, special features, new interviews of actress Paris Hilton, music composer John Ottoman... Sorry, Ottman, And special effects supervisor Jason Baird. Uh, B-roll and bloopers, video cast commentary from a location. Joel Silver reveals House of Wax. Wax on the design of House of Wax. The house built on wax, the visual effects of House of Wax, alternate opening with Jennifer Killed. Don't know who that is. Uh, gag reel and theatrical trailer. So yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, I've always wanted to kind of watch this because I like the uh, original House of Wax. I actually got, well it's not even the original, I have the House of Wax premium collection version which comes with uh, the one that's most notoriously known which is the Vincent Price version. Uh, it comes with the 3D version as well, but it comes with the original version of House of Wax, I believe it was. Uh, so that's that's got like two different films in it. I think the original one was a silent film, or the original one is the... Um, I'm pretty sure the original one... I don't know, I can't remember, where is it? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me check my shelf. I mean, rather than just spewing a bunch of bullshit, I have this other version of House of Wax, which is the... Uh, premium version, pre Blu-ray 3D, because it was originally a 3D film. Uh, Blu-ray, digital, download, and DVD. Includes the 1933 Technicolor original Mystery of the House of Wax. There you go. So, it's got two different films on it. I have yet to see the original, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not bad. The, this one's pretty good, you know, the Vincent Price one. All these were about... 15 to 20 dollars each, which is really nice. I think the most expensive was the 4K one that's next. But uh, this one, The Dead Zone, uh, this is the alternate artwork. I've changed it from the, um, might as well just show it off, the, the uh, remade artwork. I'm debating if I should change it back because uh, obviously I have, if you aren't aware, I have the imprint version. And I bought the imprint version without knowing that the imprint version was not from the same scan, which had come out literally two months earlier. The imprint version has its benefits, though, because despite it not having the uh, newer print, which is... It just sucks. It just sucks that it does not come with the newest print of the film, so you're not going to get the best representation of the film. It says it's from a 2K scan, but at the same time, it's not a remastered scan. It's just the original Blu-ray release. So this version does come from a new 2020 scan of the original uh, negative, which I think is a either a 4K scan or it's a 2K scan. It doesn't actually say. However, in contrast, special feature-wise, it's completely different, except for the four featurettes, which this is, which was memories of the dead zone, the look of the dead zone, visions of the dead zone, and the politics of the dead zone. Uh, this comes with an interview of actress Brooke Adams and new audio commentary from director of photography Mark Irwin. It does not come with m anything else. If I look at... Oh, there you are. Number 60. The imprint version. Which does come with alternate artwork on the inside, which is always a, always a joy. I, I must admit, that's the one real kicker I love about imprint. Uh, it comes with this artwork, which I believe might have been like the original Blu-ray release or something, still. Uh, it comes with, as it says, 1080 presentation from a 2K scan of the original negative. 
So this is audio commentary by film critics Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. That's unique to it. Same as Look Past the Future, Filming the Dead Zone, uh, which is an interview with cinematographer Mark Irwin and music producer slash engineer James Gertzry. Gertzry? Anyway. Uh, from Coma to Coda, Scoring the Dead Zone, Di- uh, Dino in the Dark, Adapting the King of Horror, uh, Frank Dodd and the Cujo Connection, which is a visual essay by Lee Gandon, and uh, the four featurettes, plus a, uh, a f- 1983 vintage interviews with David Cronenberg, Deborah Hill, and Martin Sheen, and interviews of Stephen King. So, yeah, it's... It's interesting. I feel like, to some degree, I might now be regretting getting the, the Scream Factory release. I know it has a better scan. That's, like, the only reason I want to get it. Get a better version looking of the film, and then keep this one for its special features and packaging. So... <sighs> uh, then I got one which is probably a much-needed upgrade from my um, Cinema Cult edition. I got the 4K of Cat People. Uh... This comes with the sleeve, which is very nice, as well as alternate artwork, which is the original theatrical trailer. Uh, theatrical trailer. The original poster, which I don't know which one I prefer, I'll be honest. They're both kind of weirdly sensual, but uh, anyway. This is a 4K scan from the original camera negative, as well as audio commentary by director Paul Schrader. That's on disc one, the 4K. On the Blu-ray disc, you get the same scan, uh, but obviously not the UHD. Audio commentary of Paul Schrader. Interviews of actors Malcolm McDowell, N- Natasha, yeah, I guess, uh, Kinski, Annette O'Toole, John Hurd, and Lynn Lowry, composer Giorgio Morador, and Paul Schrader. Cat People, an intimate portrait on the set with Paul Schrader. Special makeup effects by Tom Berman. Matte paintings. Filmmaker Robert Wise on the producer of the original Cat People, uh, Val Luton, TV spot, theatrical trailer, and photo gallery. Uh, this comes with Dolby Vision. The Blu-ray is region A, but of course the 4K is region free. So, uh, yeah, I, I have, again, I have this film. I've got the criterion of the original. I have, uh, I don't have its sequel, though, The Curse of the Cat People, or whatever. Uh, but yes, I do have the, uh, Cinema Cult Edition, which I can't imagine would look very good. So and they, they had this one for like 25 bucks, so I'm like, that's, that's a pretty good price. <sighs> I've stumped myself because of the, t- the, the Dead Zone release. It's doing my head in. Anyway, I finally got the slasher I've been wanting to get for like years now. My Bloody Valentine! And I'm keeping the uh, newly designed artwork because I, I, I kind of like it a bit more than the original artwork. This one is very curious to me because, as it's, as you can notice on the back there, it actually stipulates it has two different discs with two different cuts. Both of them are new 4K scans, one of the original camera, uh, I mean, both from the original camera negative, but one's the theatrical version and one's the uncut edition. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know why they're on two different discs. I really don't. I, I, they're very short films because they're like 90 odd minutes, but I'm... I'm kind of tempted to watch the uncut version. I usually, when it comes to slashes, you want to watch the unrated version. I mean, I did that with uh, the the Christmas one. What the fuck's it called? Um, oh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. And that was worth watching for the gory kills, but the thing is that they had to use inner positives because the camera footage, they had to cut out. It doesn't matter. It was uncut. It still looked great. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than the theatrical version. Um, but yeah, so this has the uncut version, so I don't know yet which one I want to watch, but uh, I unfortunately did not get to watch it on Valentine's Day, because I'd ordered it before Valentine's Day, but it came in after, so it's, it's, it's on, it's, it's disappointing, I guess, I don't know, it doesn't really matter to me, I don't really celebrate, so, yeah, um, but either way, you still get two different discs with both disc arts, which is really nice, as this is basically the disc art that's on the front there. Um, yeah, it's three minutes of difference in terms of runtime, so it's still very confusing as to why it's on two different discs, but at the same time, I guess it might be because it's 4K scans, and to have the bit rate be nice, you put it on two different discs. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. Sure, why not? And my last of the uh, Scream Factory haul, 
It's Cherry Falls. I'd never heard of this one. It doesn't come with any alternate artwork, but it does come with a uh, large image of a person screaming on the inside, which is uh, quite nice. Ah! Uh... <laughs> And some disc art, but yeah, this has Brittany Murphy, Michael Bain, uh, Gabriel Mann, and Jane Moore. I haven't heard of the two previous ones. I might recognize their faces. But uh, yeah, this is a film I've never heard of before. It's like a 2000s slasher film, literally 2000. It comes with a new audio commentary with director Jeffrey Wright, interviews with writer Ken Sel uh, Selden, actress Amanda Anker, producer Marshall P Persinger. Persinger. Uh, vintage interviews of Brittany Murphy, of course, uh, Michael Bain, Jay Moore, and director Jeffrey Wright. Behind the scenes footage, original script, Blu ray. Oh, I like that. BD ROM. They have the original script and the theatrical trailer. So, yeah, just one of those classic 2000 slasher films. I'm pretty keen. Now we get into the crazy territory. Tati! I got this because it was uh, $60, down from like 80 or something, no, was it? Yeah, because this is a $200 order, including the next CD set. Uh, yeah, I figured I'd get this rather than the Criterion, uh, just because this was on sale and also it's Region B, and it's like the exact same transfers and everything, it just happens to be this is Region B Studio Canal. I think the artwork on the Criterion one is a bit better to some degree, but uh, I might as well break it all down for you. It's got a nice tough box, get some artwork on the top, get some artwork on the base, which is now upside down, I apologize. Um, yep, there you go. So it tells you all the specs of all the films, and of course, it's a lot. Combined feature runtime, 244 minutes, you're kidding me. That must be with special features, yeah? I'd imagine, that's a long ass film otherwise, because I mean, the short films are only 102 minutes long. But I mean, the shortest film here is Parade, which is 90 minutes. So that's uh, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I think this. I think this. I think I'm missing something. There's, there's something here that's not telling me about. I mean, the first film which says Restored 1949. This is Jude the I'm very bad at pronouncing French words. Uh, restored 1949 version. Ah, uh, Restored 1964 version, and the 1994 version. That's three different versions of one film. With bonus features, American style, and analytical film by S Stephanie Goudet, uh, Goudet uh, which is an hour and 21 minutes. That explains the long runtime. Maybe it'll stay on the back of the disc, so let's check them all out. Uh, so firstly, you do get a booklet, um, which also has a picture on the back. I imagine that is our director. Uh, get a biography. It came with a sticker, which I figured I'd keep. I don't know. Just a fun looking sticker. Uh, biography, talking about the director. Just a couple page thing, a couple images. Get a fun visual range. I guess this guy was a pretty fun looking dude. Um, yeah, and then it talks about each film. What does it say here? Um, unfortunately, the original 1949 black and white negative of the film was destroyed, and since the release of the new 1995 color version, uh, no work has been done on the two black and white versions initially conceived. So this actually has, I believe this has both releases, uh, the original and the 95 version. One of which was it was found was made in part from uh, the color version and then transferred to black and white. In 2012, the first black and white version was digitized in 4K resolution from the two original fine grain master positives on flammable nitrate film stock kept in the French film archives. The variable densities sound was also taken from the two fine grain masters. So that's like apparently a really tricky film to have made, but uh, in terms of getting the Blu ray release. But yeah, so each page talks about a different film, or like they talk about different films. And they're all restored, which is really nice as well. Get some fun f images and pictures. That's basically like the whole book. And talks about the short films as well. His overall filmography. It's pretty good. It's a nice book. I guess we'll go in release order. So of course, the uh, first one. Which, as I mentioned, has the original, or at least a restored 1949 black and white version. 
the 64 version black and white with elements of color, and the 1994 version, which is in color, uh, which is an hour and 17 minutes long, but it says it's in 720p, the other two are in 1080, uh, and of course the uh, documentary thing. Um, they're very, very thin, uh, have a basic image and disc artwork, no alternate artwork. It's fine, it's nice. Um, your second film, I am not going to try to even pronounce any of these titles because uh, yeah, I'm not good with French. <laughs> this has the restored 1978 version, black and white, an hour and a half, 1080p, as well as the 1953 version, which is in 720p. It's going to be really interesting to choose which versions of these films I'm going to watch because a lot of them are different runtimes. I imagine I'll probably watch the 1978 version restored version? I don't know. Uh, then you've got Mon Uncle. Uh, in brackets it says My Uncle. The others... Oh, okay. It actually does It actually does have English. Uh, the first one says The Big Day. The second one is Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. The third one is My Uncle from 1958. Um, so that's pretty good. Again... They've all got the similar styles to it. This one has the restored 1958 version and the, uh, I guess the English, yeah, the English one's called My Uncle, uh, the 1958 version. Of course, I watched the French version. Uh, and some anal analytical film bonus features. There you go. <laughs> it's got a lot of a lot of details to it. Uh, this is probably his most notorious film, Playtime. Um, which I've been wanting to watch for quite a while now. It is on the Criterion channel, but I'll probably just watch this Blu-ray instead. Um, this has the restored 1967 version, uh, as well as some bonus features, like Home and Analytical Film by Stefan uh, Goudeau. A, a lot of um, stuff by Stefan. Yeah, considered by many to be his masterpiece, Playtime was the most ambitious yet risky and expensive work of Tati's career. That's all I'll give you in the description. goes for... A almost two hours, or just over two hours, you get the aspect ratio, you get Dolby Audio, Rage B. Yeah, that's a, that's a good amount of, good amount of stuff. I do like how it actually details all the extra details there, so, it's just nice, you know. Then you get Traffic, bloody crazy image there, this is the 1971 restored version. I guess we're getting to the point where it's, uh, one version per film, I guess, I don't know. But yeah. Interesting stuff. I don't have much to comment. I don't know what these films are about. I've never seen any of these films. I've always wanted to watch a couple of them, and I've heard that they're quite good. So, yeah, that's really all I can emphasize. Uh, this is Parade from 1974, which has the restored 1974 color version, uh, and a special feature as well, which is just all special features. Uh, seems to be some kind of... It doesn't stipulate the runtime of the special feature. In this case, it just says, an, in the ring, an analytical film by uh, Stefan. Is it Stefan or Stephanie? I think it's Stephanie. Just has an apostrophe on the E. Uh, Stephanie Godot. I don't know. It has an E on the end of the name. I don't want to... It's probably Stephanie. And last but not least, you have the short films of Jacques Tati. Jacques. Um, this has quite a selection as well, all on all on one disc. I mean, they're all short films. It's probably not too hard to do that. Uh, you get a twenty-five minute film, a twenty-two minute, thirteen minute, sixteen minute, twenty-nine minute, fourteen minute, and twenty-eight minutes. Uh, but yeah, as you can see there, if it'll focus. Sorry about the glare from the thing. Uh, yeah, quite a number of special features there. Sorry, a number of short films. Um, it does have all the English names, which is quite nice. So you got Brute Wanted, uh, Joyful Sunday, Work on Your Left, The School for Postman, Everything Cla Evening Classes, Home Tasting, and Go Bustia. So he did a lot from 34 to 78. That's a long period of time, as well as a uh, analysis of Jacques Tati's films. So that's not too bad. So, I mean, as an overall, that's a pretty good-looking set for, for Tati. Um, yeah, I'm pretty keen. I mean, that's seven, six films and, uh, like, seven short films. So that's a, that's a good weekend, probably. <laughs>
And then the one that I don't know how many people here would care much for, but this is my creme de la creme, one of my favorite artists. Finally got this set. I only really discovered it recently because uh, I'm a, a bit slow when it comes to musical releases. This is Against the Odds, the Blondie set from uh, 1974 to 1982. Uh, it's very reflective. It has all of their albums from 74 to 82, as you can see there. Uh, these are all CDs, because I'm not a vinyl person. I don't really apologise, I never got into it. Um, and also that would have been a hell of a lot more expensive, and it does have a rollout with all these extra film cells. Really nice overall packaging. Then you get the book, which... It's a very big, chunky one, isn't it? I can only imagine how much bigger the vinyl is. So you get this artwork on one side, get this artwork on the back, um, and it's, I mean it's pretty simple in its construction, you get four CDs here, you get four CDs at the back, in the middle you get a very, 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 very large booklet which goes into a lot of detail about the artists and their work and all the songs and their, all the interviews and just a lot of stuff. As a collector, this is like the insane stuff. I guess I'll show off one of their albums. This isn't my favorite of their albums, but it's one of their first. This is Blondie. Um, yeah, it comes with a CD. It's just an easy slip, which is fine. It's kind of cheapish, but at the same time, I don't mind. It's not like I'm gonna bring the CD out and put, uh, CDs out and put them on my shelf or anything. Uh, it does have a lot of this, all their songs, as well as some bonus tracks, because most of these, it does come with two bonus albums, it's meant to come with three, you can get the bonus album separately as a, as a different release, um, <laughs> but basically what they've done is they've released all the remastered, the first six albums, and added a bunch of bonus tracks onto the albums, which some people aren't exactly fond of, I don't particularly mind myself. I've got a lot of Beatles stuff, so it's kind of similar to some degree. They usually have it on separate discs. In this case, the extra songs, which could have been on another disc, which they could have just added extra, but they obviously didn't have the room for it. So they're like, oh, we'll just put it all on the actual CDs. So that's basically what they've done, which is fine. It's a bit weird because, you know, you get to a point where the album actually ends and then you get all these extra songs, which are usually extra takes or extended versions or all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm not overly fond of it, but I'm also like, I, I guess why not? Because I could always just stop the album and just play another one. I'm, I'm, I'm not like unable to do that. So I've listened to a couple of these albums through like YouTube music and they've already got some of the remastered albums on there. So yeah, it already has those extra bonus tracks, so, you know, I'm just happy to have them. I would really like to get their later stuff from, like, the late 90s onwards, because they obviously had a 16-year hiatus and then came back, and they haven't really released any of those albums. You get some of their hits, but for the most part, there's not much else in terms of physical releases, which is very disappointing, so I've been able to stream a lot of it, but I much prefer to get CDs. So, yeah. But yeah, that's the general gist. I won't dive too much into the Blondie set. There's a lot more videos online that show each individual thing. So if you wanna, if you're a Blondie fan, go check one of those videos out. Uh, there are different sets. Again, there's the vinyl version, which is basically the same as this, but just bigger because it's got vinyls. There's this CD version, and then there's the three disc CD version, which is just the extra stuff, which they've added two of them as in, as separate CDs on here and then put all the bonus tracks on the end of each album. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time uh, with whatever other mail comes in. I don't know. I mean, I'm expecting some stuff from Amazon, another one individual film, and then the rest is just random stuff. So, yeah. That's all for now. See you next time. Adios.